all info person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss Dyson Spheres once again. And specifically, we're actually going to follow up on one of the previous studies from 2024, or approximately one year ago from when I'm making this video, that essentially claimed a potential discovery of some really strange objects that in terms of infrared emissions and a few other things, sort of resemble these hypothetical objects. And so today, I figured it was a perfect time to do a follow-up, because seven of these unusual candidates, discovered in early 2024, have now been reanalyzed using additional observations and additional telescopes, and several papers that just came out potentially explained what these might be, basically confirming that this is unlikely to be some kind of an extraterrestrial intelligence. But before we start, let's I guess discuss the original discovery, and how all of this was found, and what this discovery was all about. Now first, this is obviously not the first time someone claimed Dyson spheres have been discovered. As a matter of fact, one of the biggest discoveries was of the Tabby star we've discussed previously in the video in the description. But we know today that the explanation for that star is most likely a tremendously large dust cloud that was actually identified with additional observations. Nevertheless, some scientists still believe that Dyson spheres, or these hypothetical megastructures, created by some kind of an advanced civilization, might still exist somewhere out there, and as a result, several years ago, researchers worked out what we potentially might see if we actually find them. And to be more exact, a very specific excess of infrared radiation, but also lack of certain other emissions, which would basically suggest that this is some kind of a really large structure hiding a star. It's sort of a telltale for a Dyson sphere emission. But obviously, since the original proposition by Freeman Dyson in the 1960s, after decades of search, nothing concrete has been discovered. And that's until the project that finished in 2014, known as Project Hephaistos, a project from Sweden dedicated to the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, with the main focus being the concept of astro-engineering, or essentially techno-signatures by super-advanced civilizations able to create engineering projects around the entire star system. And the reason this project is named Hephaistos is really because that's the name of a Greek god of all blacksmiths. And the way this project was done was really simple. Observe multiple stars at the same time and try to find stars whose emissions basically match the predicted values extremely accurately. Here we're talking about infrared emissions. And in order to conduct this project, researchers used observations from multiple telescopes. For the infrared, they used the WISE telescope, for the visual light, they used TUMAS and GAIA. And they basically focused on 5 million potential candidates, or 5 million sources, hoping that at least a few of them would reveal something. But sources within a few thousand light years of planet Earth. They were basically ignoring things that were too far away, or in different galaxies. And in essence, all of this was based on the modeled Dyson spheres, with temperatures between 100 and 700 Kelvin, that would basically resemble either a complete sphere or an almost complete sphere, and would also lack any emissions of hydrogen, but would still produce infrared light, yet possibly not optical light. In other words, it would be a star hidden by something physical, but something that would heat up as a result of the emissions. And as we've discussed in one of the previous videos from last year, they discovered seven potential objects, seven candidates. Although candidates that were actually listed as M-type stars or red dwarf stars. Stars that do produce infrared light, but also stars that are generally much smaller than the Sun. But all seven appear to be infrared sources, free from dust or other contamination sources, but producing infrared emissions expected from a typical megastructure. And so here this was obviously a pretty exciting discovery, potentially suggesting some kind of a Dyson sphere, or more likely some kind of a Dyson swarm, that was still showing us the star a little bit, but was also producing infrared emissions expected from a megastructure. But naturally, not everyone accepted this interpretation, especially because not everyone, or to be more specific, most scientists, don't actually think these would be practical or even useful, or would potentially exist anywhere. And so because of this, a lot of scientists tried to find out exactly what this is we're looking at here, and if this is possibly some kind of a new phenomenon, or something that we've known about before, but that was just discovered as a misidentified Dyson sphere. And well, just a few days ago, we finally got an official confirmation for one of these objects, which very likely applies to most of them. A high-resolution imaging of radio source associated with Project Hephaistos, specifically Candida G. And so in other words, in this particular study, researchers focused on radio emissions, trying to find out if they can actually determine exactly what this is, even though previously we only focused on optical light and infrared emissions. And the results suggest that 
Yeah, Canada G is definitely not a Dyson sphere. Because here we definitely see certain emissions in radiolite, but in this case they're actually a contamination of a background active galactic nucleus. Or basically a supermassive black hole really really far away that just happens to be in the same location. And normally we don't expect stars or really any star systems to show us these radio emissions at this level, even if we assume that this is radio communication from some kind of a civilization. And that's because these radio emissions appear natural and actually resemble every other black hole or every other active galactic nucleus we've seen so far. And so here the emissions seem to be from a distant galaxy, possibly even a radio galaxy. But it's not in the same location as the star producing infrared. As you can see from this image, these red dots show us where the star is and it's definitely not the same. And so here the conclusion is that a lot of the emissions we're seeing are extremely likely not from the star, but actually from this black hole. The black hole that's in the background, that's inside a distant galaxy, but that's actually extremely difficult to see in other wavelengths. And to be more specific, this black hole also seems to be really bright in the infrared, with the infrared emissions actually coming from here and not from the star. And just because they're so close together, they actually appeared as a single spot to some of the older telescopes like the WISE telescope that could not tell them apart. And this is basically what this galaxy sort of looks like in radio light and also in the infrared. So here the emissions are definitely not from the star and definitely not from our galaxy. We're actually seeing these super bright infrared emissions from a very specific type of an object that was only confirmed a few years back. Here we're talking about hot dogs. An acronym for Hot Dust Obscured Galaxy with many of them discovered by accident in just the last few years, that in essence all represent an extremely unusual type of a quasar, where the central black hole is very active and emits a lot of different radiation, but that radiation does not get through because there's also a lot of dust, and all of this dust ends up being heated up, which makes all of these galaxies very very bright in the infrared, possibly thousands of times brighter than any other galaxy. But because of this dust, they become almost completely invisible in optical light and in most other emissions except for radio light. And intriguingly, when looking at them from the outside, the average temperature is approximately 60 to 120 Kelvin, which is about the same as the predicted value for a typical Dyson sphere. And so here, this was definitely not a Dyson sphere, but just a distant hot dog we've never known existed. It was actually just confirmed recently and seems to be definitely one of these distant quasars. And though one of the first of these objects was discovered almost 15 years ago, it was only recently that we actually identified them as a completely separate entity that seems to represent a specific phase of evolution when a massive active black hole transforms the galaxy making it very dusty by first capturing the material really really fast but by also becoming super bright and causing all of the radiation pressure to basically push away all of the material away from the center, covering the whole galaxy in a lot of dust. And well, eventually this black hole is going to clear up everything, but it will probably take some time. You can learn more about these quasars, known as hot dogs, in one of the videos in the description. But in general, as of today, statistically approximately 1 out of 3000 quasars seems to be a hot dog. And so quite a lot of them are going to basically resemble a typical Dyson sphere. And though in this study scientists confirmed one of the candidates, they also discovered that at least three more candidates out of seven seem to also have these unusual radio counterparts in a slightly different location. So basically at least half of the candidates are very likely hot dogs for sure. Which still leaves us with three more candidates whose origin is still unknown, but it's extremely unlikely that these are Dyson spheres as well. And here in the study, researchers even explain why they don't think any of these candidates are Dyson spheres, with the most obvious explanation being why would we even expect a Dyson sphere to have these infrared emissions? Because any civilization that's advanced enough to produce a megastructure is probably going to have an ability to completely remove any signal, including the infrared, either to hide the structure or basically for the sake of efficiency. Mostly because this infrared light just shows the inefficiency of the structure and you'd want to capture as much of the light from the star as possible. So assuming that any Dyson sphere is going to be visible in the infrared spectrum is already maybe kind of erroneous. On top of this, assuming that this is indeed seven different Dyson spheres discovered in seven different locations of the galaxy, it would also not make a lot of sense that these discoveries would not be in the same spot. Because here, if this is Dyson spheres in different locations, 
This basically means that different alien civilizations managed to somehow build very similar Dyson spheres in completely different places, mastering the same technique and producing very similar structures that even seem to create very similar infrared emissions. Which would be super bizarre if it happened by accident. But if this is the same civilization building Dyson spheres around the galaxy, why not build them in the same spot instead of putting them hundreds of light years away from one another? None of these stars seem to be special in any other way, and so building Dyson spheres around these objects also doesn't really make a lot of sense. Maybe there's some alien reasoning behind this, and our puny human brains just cannot comprehend it, but in terms of spatial distribution and the property of these stars, it just doesn't make a lot of sense. Yet if you consider the alternative explanation that this is some kind of a contamination from a natural source, and a natural source that's not super common, but is actually a rare type of a quasar, it suddenly makes a lot more sense, especially because at least one of these objects has now been proven to be one of them. And so essentially here we just have a bunch of Dyson Sphere mimics, but in reality these are just extremely distant galaxies with very peculiar emissions. And though there were actually previous studies that even suggested that a typical Dyson Sphere might even have radio emissions as a kind of a discharge for the waste heat, since in this case we don't even see them in the same location, even that explanation would not make sense. And so at least for now, we still have the same explanation and the same assumption as we've discussed previously last year. All of these seven objects are most likely dust obscured galaxies. Galaxies with very active black holes that contain a lot of dust around them and produce really bizarre emissions. But emissions that are slightly different from a typical M-type star which is why they kind of stood out during these observations. Now obviously this doesn't rule out all of the objects, as a matter of fact at least three candidates can still be explained in some other ways, but at least for now we can assume that half of these candidates seem to be caused by natural phenomena not involving super advanced alien civilizations. And we'll probably come back and discuss the three other ones in some of the future videos once there are some updates and some more explanations. And so until then, check out some of the previous videos in the description Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.